Hey guys, today we'll be talking about this crazy unique opening which is the Frankenstein Dracula variation. So this variation starts off with the Vienna game which is e4, e5, knight c3, knight f6, and bishop c4. So in one of our previous videos, we actually showed how to play the Vienna Gambit, which is pawn to f4 for white, and you guys can check that out if you're interested. But for today's video, we're going to talk about this crazy line which occurs after bishop c4, and now here, we're going to play knight takes e4, sacrificing our knight immediately. So there are three common replies for white, and the first move is just to recapture with knight takes e4. The second one is to play bishop takes f7 check, and the third move, which is actually played by higher rated players and those that are more familiar with this variation, and that's to play queen h5, threatening to checkmate one of seven. So first, let's talk about knight takes e4, the most common reply according to the Lee Chess database. Now, knight takes e4 is actually not an optimal reply for white because now we can play pawn to d5, gaining back the knight that we sacrificed earlier immediately on the next move by attacking both the knight and the bishop at the same time. There's no way for white to try and hold on to his pieces because for example, after a move like bishop to b5 check, we just play pawn to c6. Again, we still have a double attack and white will not be able to save both his pieces at the same time. So the most common replies here are bishop to b5 check, which we've seen, we just play pawn to c6 and then we recapture any one of the piece later on. White can also play bishop to d3 here, in which we just capture. After bishop captures, we can play the very aggressive pawn to f5 move, pushing our pawn forward and forcing the bishop back. There's no need to worry about any queen to h5 check because we can just block with our g-pawn. So after white retreats his bishop, bishop f3, now we play bishop to d6 to strengthen our e5 pawn and prevent threats like queen e2 to attack our e5 pawn later on. So if white plays pawn to d3, now we castle and let's say white just develop his pieces normally. We also develop our pieces normally and this is quite an easy position for black because our pieces are more active and developed more naturally. Our pawns on e5 and f5 can be pushed forward later to create attack on the king side and white's pieces are kind of awkwardly placed because the knight, ideally the knight would prefer to be on f3, but in this case the bishop is on f3 which is kind of limited in this vision and the knight on e2 as well is not really optimally placed. So there should be no problems for black in this variation. So we return to this position and instead of bishop to d3 and bishop to b5, white can also play bishop takes d5 giving back the bishop for a pawn immediately. So again, it's quite easy for black to play. As you guys can see, the evaluation bar on the left really shows black with a slight advantage of 0 0.5 or 0 0.6. We just recapture the bishop, attacking the knight. The knight can't really move because that will leave the g2 pawn hanging. So let's say white defends with pawn to d3. We just develop our pieces normally. And it's actually not easy for white to bring out his pieces because for example, if he plays a move like knight to f3, we already, we already have some threats going on with black with bishop to g4, pinning the knight to the queen, and we're going to jump our knight in with knight to d4 to utilize this pin later on. So already it's not an easy position for white to play. Which is why even though it's the most common move played according to the database, knight takes e4, the knight takes e4 reply for white is actually not very good. So now let's move on to the second option, which is bishop takes f7 check. So the idea here is, well, if I take the knight as white, you're going to push up your pawn and I'm going to lose math here anyways, right? So why not, before that happens, I'm going to give up my bishop first, gaining back the pawn in the process and forcing you to recapture with the king to create weaknesses in your king side and your king can't castle anymore. So now white can just recapture the knight and the pieces are equal, but black's king will not be able to castle. So here, don't worry as black because although there are some tricks and some traps for white, I'm going to show how to counter all those traps and black 
should be in a commanding position soon. So here we just play the move pawn to d5. We get this nice center e and d pawns and activate our bishop as well. But here we got to be careful of two moves from white. The first one is queen to h5 check. And the second one is queen to f3 check. So let's take a look at queen h5 check first. So queen h5 check, we play pawn to g6 to block the check. White captures, queen takes e5, attacking the rook and threatening knight to g5 check. Now here, you got to be really careful and remember that the only move that wins for black here is by playing the move bishop to h6. The idea of this move is simple. Bishop h6 develops the bishop. We protect the g5 square now because our queen protects the square as well. And also, our rook on h8 is now protected by the queen. But not only that, the main threat for black in the next move is actually we want to play the move rook to e8 over here to utilize this open file and pin the queen or the knight to the enemy king. And there's no checks that white can do because the bishop, as mentioned earlier, covers this check on g5. It covers this check on f4 as well from the queen. And this position is really kind of lost for white. Because for example, if let's say he plays a normal developing move like knight to f3, we just play rook to e8 and there's no way for white to save his knight. Because now the queen is under attack. And let's say he moves the queen somewhere, let's say queen c3, we just capture the knight with check and we already gain a piece. So let's go back here. And like I said, if white tries to save this knight on e4 instead and play a move like knight to g3 or knight to c3, just retreating the knight anywhere, it's a blunder as well because rook to e8 comes pinning the queen to the king and it's an easy win for black. All right, so we have discussed queen to h5 check. Now we need to see what about queen to f3 check. So here we're going to play the move king to g8, hiding our king away from threats. And now white has a few options. He might play the move pawn to d4, a sneaky move actually, offering this knight on e4 as we can capture the knight. However, this is a trap because we cannot capture this knight on e4 as that would be a terrible blunder due to queen to b3 check. And there's no way for black to defend against this check and it will be checkmate. We can block with our queen, why would just capture? We can block with our bishop, why would just capture? And this is checkmate. So be very, very careful after the move pawn to d4. We cannot capture this knight on e4. So instead, I'm going to recommend you guys to play this move pawn to h6, which is a multi-purpose move. Firstly, we are preventing the knight from jumping to g5 because now that white has pushes d pawn forward, the bishop or the knight can jump to g5. And let's say after knight to g5, white has queen f7 checkmate as well with some nasty threats. So pawn to h6 prevents all of that. And also it creates an escape route with our king, with king to h7. Because now, for example, if let's say white still does not retreat the knight, he takes out e5 pawn, we can already capture the, the knight here because there's no longer queen b3 checkmate as we just escape our king this way. So after h6, white has to move his knight, let's say knight to g3, and we can just develop our pieces like normally, for example, knight to c6, attacking the pawn. If he captures, we just recapture back. And later on, we can just develop our pieces as usual. For example, bishop e7, bishop d6, king h7, rook f8, bring our rook up, and the position is completely fine for black. So we've seen what if white tries a sneaky trick with pawn to d5. And there's one more move we got to be careful of, and that's the move knight to g5. So again, this move is sneaky because we cannot capture the knight due to queen takes d5, and it's a similar checkmate threat that we saw earlier on. So after knight to g5, we need to play the move queen to d7. And although it seems like an awkward move, it's the only move here for black and the best move here for black in this position because now the queen covers the f7 square and the queen also protects this d5 pawn at the same time. Now, our pieces might seem awkward at the moment, but don't worry because as you guys can see from the computative valuation on the left, it actually shows minus 0.7, which means that black is really better in this position. So let's say white continues its normal development with a move like pawn to d3. We can play pawn to h6, similar idea as in the previous variation. We kick away the knight and we make an escape route with our king. Knight has to retreat. 
we play knight to c6, as usual developing our pieces. We can also play knight to d4 later on with some threats on the white position. Let's say he plays pawn to c3, preventing that. We just play bishop e7, and after some normal developing moves, we are completely fine here as black after rook to f8, as we have a nice center pawn. White's pieces are kind of awkwardly placed at the edge of the board. We have this nice open file. Our king is not weak at all. We just have to move our queen later and we can bring our bishop out and it's quite an easy position for black to play. Alright, so moving back to this position, we've seen the two main moves of knight takes e4 and bishop takes f7. Now, we need to discuss what if white plays the aggressive move queen to h5, which is actually the best move for white in this position and many high rated players would know that this is the best move for white and play it against you. So the threat is very simple. White is threatening checkmate in 1. Our knight is still under attack on e4. The queen attacks f7 and attacks our e5 pawn as well. And it seems like black's position is crumbling because so many things is under attack. However, don't worry as we just have to play this move knight to d6, retreating back our knight to protect our f7 square and also attack the bishop at the same time. Here usually white will retreat his bishop as well with bishop to b3, but if white decides to capture here on e5, queen takes e5 check, this is not a problem at all because we just play queen e7, offering a trade of queens. The, the white bishop is still under attack on c4, and as you guys can see, the computer evaluates this position as about 0.00, .00 so there's no advantage for white at all, and we just play normal chess. So white will usually not go for this variation, and he will instead play the move bishop to b3 to try and keep his advantage. Now, here comes the spicy part of this Frankenstein Dracula variation. There's two options here for black. We can play knight to c6, or we can play bishop to e7. Bishop to e7 is a more calm move that is not very complicated to play. So, we are not going to recommend this bishop e7 move, and instead, we're going to, I'm going to recommend you guys to play the move knight to c6, which will result in crazy, crazy positions later on in this video. It might not seem like anything is happen anything is happening at the moment but trust me as you guys can see in the next few moves that some crazy lines and crazy moves will occur so here the best move for white is to play knight to b5 the idea now is that we cannot capture the knight because remember our knight on d6 was on duty to guard this pawn on f7 so the knight to b5 move is like a deflection and white just wants to capture here on d6 with check on the next move and then followed by queen takes f7 checkmate. So we have to play pawn to g6, blocking the diagonal of the queen, but white can play queen to f3 and attack our f7 pawn this way instead with the same idea of knight takes d6. So now we're going to play the move pawn to f5, and the white queen can now go to queen to d5 with, again, the same idea of knight takes d6 check, followed by queen to f7 checkmate. Now, the reason why I say this is such a crazy line is because now we have to be prepared as black to sacrifice our rook on a8. Now you might be thinking, what? Sacrifice our rook on a8? How does that happen? That sounds crazy, right? Well, it's not crazy because if you think about this position, how do we defend the f7 square as black? We cannot capture this knight. We cannot capture the knight on b5 because that would just be checkmate. And the only way to protect this f7 square is by playing queen e7 or queen f6. Queen e7 is the best move, but that allows white to play knight takes c7 check. We have to play king to d8, the only move, and now knight takes a8, and it looks like white is just one whole rook up, and this is just completely losing for black. But wait, hold on for a moment, and I'm going to show you this crazy variation. So even though it might seem like we are a whole rook down, our king cannot castle anymore, and it looks like completely losing for black. But that's just not the case because we're going to play the move pawn to b6. This I The move pawn to b6 idea is very simple. We're going to play bishop to b7 on the next move and the, the knight on a8 is trapped. So at least we'll be able to recover a knight for a rook. But more importantly, the pawn to b6 move allows bishop to b7, which actually is going to threaten the queen after we move our knight away and also utilize the power of this bishop along this diagonal. So now here, white has many options. One variation that the computer likes a lot is to play the move 
queen to d3, bishop to b7, knight to e2, captures, and castle. But if you think about it, this queen to d3 move in the first place just doesn't make sense for a normal human because that just hinders the development of his own bishop, right? Because now white can't play d3 and bring his bishop out. He can't play b2, uh, sorry, b3 because the bishop is, white's bishop is on b3 instead. So he can't develop his bishop this way. So it doesn't really make sense for a human to play a move like queen to d3. So let's try to think about this position from white's perspective instead. As white, you're already up a rook. So chances are you will want to finish your development as soon as possible, right? With a move like, for example, knight to f3 and castle. But actually, knight to f3 is not a very good move for white because after bishop to b7, now the knight is trapped. So in many cases, white will try to play a move like knight takes b6 because he wants to try and gain as much material as possible before the white knight gets captured. So after captures, captures, let's say white castles, this is really losing for white because after knight to d4, we see the whole idea of this bishop b7 move as the queen is actually trapped on d5. Our bishop on b7 attacks the queen. Our knight on d6 protects the bishop. The queen actually has no moves to go because queen to c4 here loses because of the knight. Same thing with here. Both our knight attacks the queen. Queen can capture our bishop because our knight protects. And the only way the queen can get out is to capture here on e5. Queen takes e5. But this is just losing already because now white has to move. Knight takes f3 giving check first. White has to take the knight. But that just leaves the queen hanging. And now we can just capture the queen. And it's an easy win for black. And this position was actually played by a 2300 as white versus a grandmaster back in an over the board tournament in 2010. So even strong players and high rated players will fall into this trap if they haven't seen this variation before, which is why I say this variation is really crazy and really tricky. All right, so according to the database, the most popular move here is to play the move pawn to h4 or pawn to d3. Both of them transposes later on into the same position because a move like pawn to h4, we play bishop to b7 and then pawn to d3. The idea is simple. White wants to develop his bishop and play bishop to g5 to win our queen on e7. So we have to play pawn to f4 here to block, the, to block off the bishop from getting to g5. And now our threat as black is simple as well. We want to play knight to d4 with similar ideas in the previous variations to trap the queen. An important thing to note is that in most cases, we are not in a hurry to capture this knight on a8 because like I said, the knight is already trapped. It's already dead. So it's only a matter of time that we're going to capture the knight later on and we don't have to do it immediately because there's no way for this knight to escape. So here, white usually retreats the queen this way, queen to f3. Now we play bishop to h6. White develops with bishop to d2. We play knight to d4, attacking the queen. White probably plays queen to g4 because he has to defend this pawn on g2 as well. And now we're going to play the move pawn to e4, breaking open in the center. Now, an important thing to note here is that these moves are some of the top engine moves by Stockfish 16 at a high depth. So even though the evaluation here shows plus 0 0.27 or plus 0 0.3, it's actually very unclear for both sides for white and black because this, comp this position is very complicated due to the material imbalance. So now after castling, we're going to push our pawn forward, pawn to e3, captures. Now we can't capture because our knight would be hanging. So we have to take the bishop first with check, recapture with the a pawn. Now we capture the pawn on e3. And the only move here for white is to play the move bishop to e1, because if let's say he plays bishop c3, trying to attack our rook on h8 is really losing for white after pawn to e2 check, discover check, and we are either going to queen or we're going to take the rook on the next move. So he has to play bishop to e1, and after pawn to e2 check, rook to d2 the only move. And now we see the complexity of this position because now would be the right time to capture the knight on e8. And as for the material imbalance, we have the bishop pair as black, but we are down a bishop for a rook. But however, in this position, as you guys can see, the white's rook on d2 is pinned. 
So we can win the rook on d2 anytime as well. So some of the top engine moves will continue with something like this. Queen takes e2. We don't even have to capture the queen. We can just develop our rook. White trade queens. Captures, captures. Plays knight to e2. We are in no hurry to capture this rook because the pin is always there. We can capture this pawn instead on g2. Rook to g1. Rook to f1. Captures, captures. And now with the best accurate moves from both sides of white and black, this position should end up as a draw in the end game. But as a normal human, it's almost impossible to find the top move or play the best move at every single position. And as you guys can see over here, where we give pawn to e2 check, this position is actually not very easy for white to play because remember, from white's perspective, they are up a rook, even though the knight is trapped and can be recaptured, but still, they are up a whole rook in material. But it's black that's actually giving all the threats and giving all the attacks. As our bishop pair here is, the strength of our bishop pair here is tremendous. Somehow we managed to get a pass pawn on e2, which is just one move away from queening. And most likely, your opponent will not be able to play such accurate moves and make a blunder along the way. Because what I've shown you guys are just the best, the best moves for both white and black. So let's go back over here in a critical position where we just lost our rook on a8. Now, the most played move was pawn to h4 and pawn to d3, right? But the reason why I say this position is so difficult for white to play is because sometimes some player might think like the knight is trapped anyways, and they're going to capture this pawn on b6 first which is, if I'm not mistaken, the second most played move in this variation. So if knight takes b6, this move sometimes actually backfires on white. And it's better off for white to leave the knight on a8. Now it might not be, it's not easy at all to figure out the reason why knight takes b6 sometimes is not good for white, but we shall see in the next few moves. So a takes b6. Now let's say white plays the same idea that I shown earlier with pawn to h4, pawn to d3, and bishop to g5. So we go with bishop b7, pawn to d3. Remember, the threat here for white is to play bishop to g5 to win our queen. So we need to play the move pawn to f4 to block the diagonal. And after similar moves that I've shown earlier on in the previous variation, we get this same position over here. After takes, takes bishop e1, check, rook blocks. But now, as you guys can see, the difference is that the white knight is no longer on a8. So let me just find the earlier position that I shown. So it was this position, remember, where the knight was still on a8 and white did not play knight takes b6. And most likely in with perfect play, the engines evaluate this position as a draw with 0.00. .00. But if we go back to our line right now where white plays knight takes b6 earlier on, trying to gain an extra pawn, if you see the computer evaluation over here, it actually shows black with a slight advantage. And if you run this position with a stronger engine on a higher depth, it actually gives black a minus 0.6 advantage. So now what's the difference then? You might be wondering, what's the difference in this position? The difference is that black doesn't have to waste a move to capture the knight on a8. Because remember, in the previous position, this was the previous position, as black, we had to play bishop takes a8 Essentially, we have to waste a move or use a move to capture the knight. But in this case, since white voluntarily gave up his knight earlier on with knight takes b6, we no longer have to capture the knight here on e8. So now we can play this move rook to e8 and all of a sudden, we protect this pawn on e2. There's no way that white captures the pawn on e2 because let's say if captures, we just capture with the queen because now the rook protects the queen and this rook cannot capture due to the pin sorry, due to the pin here along the diagonal. So as you guys can see, it's already not easy for white to play. And just because of this small difference that white captured on b6 or not, it resulted in a slightly worse position for white already. And that's it for today's video. I would say that this Frankenstein Dracula variation is not popular at all and many players have never seen this line before. So there's still plenty of variations and plenty of moves to explore in this variation. But I think that this crazy unique opening provides a lot of fighting chances and good chances for black to win. 
So congratulations on learning how to play the Frankenstein Dracula variation. If you're interested in learning on how to crush the Kairokan defense, then click on this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.